So far, the Galaxy S23 Ultra has turned out to be an absolute powerhouse when it comes to just everyday work, gaming, and emulation. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because I've got my hands on the brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now when it comes to these Galaxy S devices, I'm a huge fan. This is my go-to Android device. But I only upgrade every two years, so last year I didn't pick up the S22. Uh, I'm still using the S21 Plus, and it served me very well. But when I saw the specs of the new S23, I knew I had to get my hands on it. And I usually go with the low end or even the Plus model, but this time I figured I'd go with the Ultra. And yeah, I mean, I think this is going to turn out to be a great device. And this video is more of a performance review. We're going to do an unboxing, we're going to go over all of the features and specs, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some games, and emulation. But yeah, with the new CPU they opted to use in here, I think we're going to be seeing some amazing performance. Over on Samsung's website, you can opt for a few different special colors. I went with the Lime version, but to my eye, it definitely looks a little more yellow, kind of giving off a glow-in-the-dark vibe. I know on camera it's probably coming off more yellow than it really is, but... I don't see this being Lime at all. I thought it'd be a little more vibrant, but either way, it's definitely different from other devices that I have right now. It was kind of a toss up between this Lime or Purple. Maybe I should have went with the Purple, but let's go ahead and get this thing on. Now, uh, one thing that I'm really looking forward to is this display. I'm a huge fan of AMOLED displays, and with this, we've got the new Dynamic AMOLED 2X. It's got a refresh rate up to 120 hertz. It supports HDR10+, and we've got up to 1200 nits of brightness on this new Dynamic AMOLED 2X display from Samsung. Like a lot of manufacturers, even on their high-end devices, they don't include a charger. At least I got a USB Type-C cable, but I've got a ton of these laying around. It would have been nice to get a charger with this, especially given the price that these new phones are going for. And just like the non-existent S22 Note, uh, basically they've kind of wrapped the Note up inside of the new Ultra. So we do get the S Pen, and by no means am I an artist. As you can see, I can hardly draw a stick figure, but it does come in really handy for taking notes. We can also kind of cut and paste different pictures just using the S Pen itself. I actually really enjoy using this on the S23 Ultra. Taking a look at the specs, for the CPU we get the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 SoC. This is an absolute monster when it comes to ARM CPUs. We've got three A510 cores at 2 GHz, two A710 cores at 2.8 GHz, two A715 cores at 2.8 GHz, and we get that one big X3 core running at up to 3.36 GHz. I mean, this thing puts out some amazing performance. The unit we're taking a look at in this video has 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Unfortunately, you know, with all of these new Samsung devices, at least the higher end ones, we don't get micro SD card support. And these manufacturers do it so you have to buy the higher end version of the phone and spend more money. But when it comes to this screen, it's definitely one of the best that I've seen in a mobile device. We've got a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display. 120 hertz, it supports HDR10+, and we've got up to 1200 nits of brightness with a resolution of 1440 by 3088. We've got a few cameras around the back, but the main claim to fame here is the new 200 megapixel f1.7 rear camera, and around front we've got a 12 megapixel. A 5000 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt quick charging capabilities, and it's running Android 13 with One UI 5.1, but remember, since we're working with a new Galaxy S device, we also have Samsung DeX. And this will work wired or wirelessly, so yes, we do have HDMI or display out of USB Type-C, otherwise known as alt mode, and I will have a full Samsung DeX video coming up with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, because I really do think that this could be a desktop replacement. And of course, when it comes to the overall user experience of One UI 5.1, this is really quick. I mean, we've got more than enough power to kind of push through anything. Everything loads up really, really quickly. And I just can't get over how beautiful this 6.8 inch AMOLED display is. I think they've done a bang up job. And the last device I used that really impressed me with its display quality was the uh, Pixel 7 Pro. But I think this has a beat. It's definitely personal preference because I'm a huge fan of AMOLED. I just love those saturated colors. But yeah, this does look really, really nice. Now, before we move over to native Android gaming and emulation, I did want to take a look at some benchmarks. And the first one on the list here is 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. On the S23 Ultra, we scored a 3,786. Over on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, 1,907. Moving over to Geekbench 5, on the S23 Ultra, single core, 1,506, multi, 4608. 
And the final one here is Antutu coming in with a 1,216,893 on the S23 Ultra versus, you know, right there at 850,000 on the S22 Ultra. So obviously when it comes to these synthetic benchmarks, it's putting down some good performance, but now it's time to take a look at some real world gaming. And first on the list, we've got Diablo Immortal. This game runs great on a lot of different devices, and right now we're at very high 60 FPS. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, we can't go up to the epic settings. It's just grayed out right now, but I'm sure it'll be unlocked for this device later on down the road. Here's Call of Duty Mobile, and with this, we can go up to 90 FPS, but unfortunately, as you can see, my uh, camera just really isn't picking it up great, so I'm going to swap back over to 60. So we're at very high settings, 60 FPS, and again, we've got a game that runs just fine on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And by the way, the controller I'm using right now is the Razer Kishi V2. I'll leave a link for it in the description. The S23 Ultra fits in here perfectly. It really does fill this controller out. And of course, we had to test out Genshin Impact. 60 FPS, high settings. Unfortunately, on every single Android device that I've tested, we can never max this out and get a constant 60 with it. And we have no way to go up to 120 like they do on iOS right now. So high, 60, or if you did want to go up to the ultra settings or the very high settings, you could take this down to 30 and play it just fine. And if you're familiar with this game, you know the developers really favor iOS. They have a lot of different features that we just don't have over here in Android. And I know if they could, you know, pump out some more optimizations for specific chipsets, it would help out. But there's a lot of chipsets to kind of optimize for. Now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos, the emulation testing segment. Here we have some PSP using PPSSPP. Kind of starting off light here, but we are at 5x resolution with Ghost of Sparta. Vulcan back in, running just fine. And we could actually upscale this a bit more. I could go up to 7x and still get a constant 60 out of it. And when it comes to the easier to emulate games, even something like Tekken 6, you can max it out at 10x, but it really doesn't make sense given our screen's resolution. Either way, as long as the PSP game is compatible with the emulator, it's gonna run it at full speed. Moving over to some 3DS using the Citra emulator, we're at 3x resolution and unfortunately we still don't have a Vulcan back in so we're using OpenGL, but these Snapdragon chips do a great job at OpenGL so uh, we're good to go at 3x with this emulator. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth right now, I just figured I'd go ahead and set this thing up stationary because uh, the next one we're testing here is PS2 using EtherSX2. Soul Calibur 3, 2x resolution, and I will tell you that I didn't get the kind of performance I was expecting out of PS2 emulation right now, and I think it comes down to the emulator just not being updated anymore. Don't get me wrong, I mean, even something like God of War 2 at 2x runs really well, but I was expecting to be able to go up to around 3x with this one, but unfortunately, when there's lots of particles on screen, it does dip on down. Easier to emulate PS2 games will be able to upscale much higher. For instance, Crash Bandicoot, we can take that all the way up to 5x resolution, which is definitely overkill for this display, but it's still great to know that those easier to... So far, I've been having a great time with the Galaxy S23 Ultra when it comes to emulation and gaming. We've got a lot of power here, and I know it's a bit expensive, but I also use this as a tool for work, so, you know, I do get my money's worth. It's not just a phone that I picked up specifically for gaming, but there is some more stuff that I want to test out on this, so I have some more videos on the way. First one's going to be Samsung DeX. Really interested in seeing the new changes with uh, One UI 5.1. I think we can go up to 4K with it. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I'll have that video coming up real soon, so keep an eye on the channel. And remember, if you're looking for a lower cost device that puts out the same kind of performance, they do offer the Galaxy S23 and they have the S23 Plus. Both of those are going to come in at a lower price tag, but they've got the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip and we should see the same kind of performance come out of those. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on performance here. I mean, is this thing putting out enough? Are you going to wait? Are you planning on picking up a device with this same chipset? Let us know down below. And if you did want to learn a little more about the S23 or the S23 Ultra, links for those are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.